Hi, I'm Kristen, and today we're gonna make some Quilt As You Go coasters. So there's a cute little gift. You can use up batting scraps and fabric scraps at the same time. So uh, you may be seeing, I've got, what I'm really gonna do is show you these kind of ones. So it's like um, a log cabin kind of a deal, uh, just starting with a shape in the middle. Um, but you can also simplify it down and just do sort of strips of fabric. Uh, if you want to do something like this, then watch this video and then go back and watch the wall hanging video that I did, which is pretty much about how you stitch and flip in the strips. Um, so you just use the measurements and stuff uh, from this one and, and how you sort of turn it, make it into a coaster, but you'd use the method from the, the wall hanging video. But what I'm going to do today is do some ones that are kind of similar to these and show you some variations at the end. Um, you can make these any size you want. Basically, the reason I've got all these gray ones, <laughs> my sister, she doesn't usually ask me to make her things, but um, actually she does recently. But anyway, <laughs> when, she, when she does, um, she usually wants them to be gray. That's her favorite color <laughs> or non-color. Um, so that's, that's why uh, I'm using the color palette I'm using. Anyway, but she's asked me for um a group of different sized coasters so she's got like different tables in a room different size of cups and things and she's finding them really useful because they don't um sort of clink if they spill it kind of absorbs you can wash them all that kind of stuff she's got a toddler so um heavy coasters that are like more breakable or can break things if they get thrown are not ideal <laughs> so that was um so that's why she asked for them basically um, so I'm making her like a set of six or eight um, and I'm gonna have some that are like the regular kind of coaster size sort of five inch five and a half inch and then some bigger ones because she asked for larger ones so I think I've got six and a half inch squares or and then some that are more like a rectangle so a bit more like a mug rug or something so I'll show you all the ones that when I finish I'm just gonna uh, show you the method with one coaster and it'll be the same for whatever size you do so and i'll show you all the variations at the end so all you need is your batting scraps your sewing scraps and some fabric for the backing so what to say whatever size uh you want your coaster to be that's the the size that you need your backing fabric to be okay so let's get started okay so you're going to start with a piece of batting and a scrap of fabric um i'm pretty sure this square of batting was five by five or 5.5 .5, 5 .5 doesn't really matter and it doesn't have to be a square it can be a rectangle and it can be any kind of batting you like so um, just whatever you have so I've just picked this random uh, triangle to start with and so I'm just putting the one piece of fabric down in the middle it does, again it doesn't have to be in the middle there's somewhere I started sort of off to one side in a corner um, and I'm just stitching it down so I'm just using a straight stitch um, and I'm just fitting, I think I was using the presser foot as my guide for where the next line was going to go. Um, but you could do wavy lines, decorative lines, however you want to quilt it. So we're basically just quilting down the first piece of fabric and then we're going to add the second one. So I've got that other little triangle waiting there beside me. Um, so it's, it is basically a stitch and flip method. Um, and you'll see after the second piece um, what we're doing uh, more clearly. So there's the first one. And then, um, so you just put down any other piece along a straight edge. So you just wanna make sure that the second piece is at least as long as the first piece. And I'm just stitching it down. Um, I am changing my stitch length for this bit. So for sewing it down, it's like a normal piecing stitch length, like two or 2.2 .2 or whatever. And then when I go to um, quilt it down, when I flipped it, um, then I'm, I'm putting the stitch length up. I can't remember if it was three or 3.5. Um, and I was just trimming off the tip there. So, um, so then you just finger press it down and quilt down again here. And just keep going with that. And each time we add... A piece of fabric we're trying to hide the raw edges from the ones before so you can start with whatever size shape you like as long as it has straight edges so this would be difficult with a circle I mean you could do it but you wouldn't end up with a circle in the middle because <laughs> you'd be um, having to add on on uh, straight edges but any other shape 
um, that has a straight edge, edge, you can do this. So you just start with any shape in the middle. So I'm just trimming off some threads. I will speed this up in a minute, but I just want to show you the first few pieces, how they go. So this piece is a bit longer, um, but I'm just making sure it covers the raw edge of one side and stitching it down. And then I will flip it over and then I'm going to trim off the excess. So this is what we need to do most of the time because mostly you're probably going to have some pieces that are a little bit longer. So I'm just trimming along to roughly follow where my next straight edge is going to be. So that sort of more darker colored triangle that I stitched on first, I'm going to follow that along with the end of this piece. So kind of it is kind of like a log cabin or a courthouse steps kind of thing if you know those blocks. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has, we just don't want too much bulk underneath of, of excess, excess fabric that we don't need there. It's not a big deal um, if there's a little bit more than you need, but just trim it as best you can. And then I'm quilting down. And just so you know, I think actually I wasn't using, because this, this wasn't that bulky, because this is just cotton batting that I'm using here. But um, if you were having any trouble getting things through the machine, or especially for later on when we're doing putting the backing on um, and top stitching on that, um, then I would use either a walking foot if you have it, or um, my machine has like a dual feed thing built in, so I would turn that on. So essentially what we're gonna do is just keep adding to it. Um, so if you've seen either my crumb quilting video or the scrappy, I think I called it scrappy squares, but it's basically scrappy quilt blocks video. I'll I'll um, add links to the those in the description or in a card above or something. Um, but it's a similar idea. We're just trying to cover the raw edge and keep going round and round and building up until we get to the outside. And then we'll trim that all down and add the backing. So I'm going to speed this bit up so you can see, keep seeing how you add the pieces and then um, once that's finished, then I'll show you uh, how we finish off the coaster. So you're going to trim all the excess scraps and then get a piece of backing fabric um, that's the same size as your coaster. I'm putting it right sides to right sides and I've got a little clip there just to tell me where to stop. Uh, and we're going to leave sort of a two, two to three inch gap for turning. Um, so you don't sew in that two to three inch gap. So that's why I've got that clip just to remind me to stop sewing there. And we're back stitching on either side of that gap. Now I didn't point this in the right direction when I was filming exactly, but basically I'm trimming off the corners uh, and then I'm trimming off just any excess bits on the edge um, so that there's no bulk in the seams when we turn this around. So that is what is happening there. And then I'm gonna turn it around and I use like the end of a paintbrush to sort of poke the corners. You could also use a chopstick or anything blunt, but sort of pointy <laughs> basically. And again, I wasn't pointing the camera in the right place for that, so sorry about that. Um, so then you fold in the raw edges on your turning gap 
and uh, clip it and then you're going to um, press it press it so I did that off camera so this has been pressed and I've got my raw edges in that turning gap um, inside uh, so now I'm going to start on that side where there's the gap and I'm going to top stitch. So I've lengthened my stitch so it was like a three or a three and a half and I'm trying to get as close to the edge as I can here. So it's a bit like when you're uh, sewing on machine binding on the top. So really close to the edge because you want to catch the, the, make sure you catch the fold for that gap so that the raw edges are inside. Um, and then you get kind of as close to the corner as you can. I found it was easiest if I went like up to one edge and then did a little, you can see a little stitch, sort of almost like there's like a blunt corner, and then stitch the other side. Um, but if you get this a bit wrong, there is a hack. I'll show you one. You can just basically go round and round a couple times so it looks like a kind of decorative stitching around the edge if you if it goes wrong on the top stitch bit. This is the most difficult bit. This is the bit you might need your walking foot for. Um, I was okay on my machine, but, um, if you have any trouble, just do use a walking foot or a dual, fo dual feed, um, setting or whatever it is that you have on your machine. So we're just going to go all the way around. And then obviously, um, when you get to where you started, you're going to do a little back stitch to finish off and then you're going to trim your threads and that's your finished coaster. So here's the finished one we did in the tutorial. I got carried away doing the smaller ones. So this was the first one um, that I tried. This is where I had to do the multiple uh, stitches around the edges because um, the first top stitch didn't go. But the more you do, the more used to it you get. So I started with a variety of shapes. So you can go square, hexagon, triangle, anything with straight sides is gonna work. Um, so I think I'm going to make a few other big ones for my sister. Um, I told her not to watch this video, but just in case she does, I'm going to uh, maybe some make some of the bigger ones later so she can't uh, see them and there'll definitely be some surprise ones. So my tip would be to definitely quilt that first bit of fabric. So that triangle one I've just put up top is the one where I didn't uh, quilt down the piece of fabric to start. So I just started with flipping the edges once and I think it looks a bit poofy and strange. Um, some people might like it, but uh, anyways, I preferred it with um, everything being the same texture. So everything quilted down roughly the same. Um, so all you have to do is start with any straight edge shape. So it can be a square, it can be like this, which was like basically two triangles put together. Um, it can be the hexagon that I showed you before. Any shape at all with a straight side. And I couldn't resist making a slightly brighter one for myself. So there it is. So I hope you like that tutorial and um, you managed to make some fun coasters. Um, and I'm hoping my sister's gonna like mine when I send them to her, it's gonna be a Christmas present. Um, uh, and if you do like videos like this, then please do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, so thanks so much for spending time with me and I'll see you again soon.